What would be a funny thing to say to a surgeon before anesthesia kicks in five seconds later? Story 1. As an anesthesiologist, let me clear some things up here. Rarely is the surgeon even in the OR during induction, going to sleep time. Usually just the anesthesiologist, OR nurse, and person that helps with instruments for the surgery are present. I've heard and seen every crazy thing imaginable, including people's deepest fears and secrets. Mostly this is caused by a premedication versus removing inhibitions. Every now and again I'll hear something that will even make the entire room chuckle. 99.99% of the time, whatever you say has already been said and isn't nearly as funny or original as you think. I often hear from patients in pre-op that their biggest concern is saying something they will regret. And I always reassure them that the majority of people talk a lot less, and the ones that do talk usually hold relatively normal conversations for the brief period of time of getting a pre-medication to going under full general anesthesia. Now, if we're talking about a case involving moderate or deep sedation and not general anesthesia, it's completely different. If I were to have surgery and the anesthesiologist does not know me or my profession, I'm sure I'd do my best to prank him by saying something completely obscure about anesthesia and just give him a wink. Since my inbox is getting filled with medical questions, please talk to your anesthesiologist the day of surgery about your complete medical history. It all matters. Let him or her determine what is important to your care. Story 2. As the anesthesiologist was putting me under, he just said I'd start to feel sleepy soon. I asked him, aren't I supposed to be counting back from 100 or something? He replied, I don't know, I must have skipped that class. Being an anesthesiologist must be awesome, as you can always get the last word in. Anesthesiologist. Okay, how are you feeling now? Me. Makes lame joke. Oddly, at this point, the room starts cracking up. No way it was that funny, right? Anesthesiologist. Told you so. Turns out he gave me a little anturo-grade amnesia before a spinal block, endured my stupid joke, then told the room, watch this, he's going to say the same dumb thing again, word for word. I like how you know it's a lame joke, then get suspicious that people actually laughed at it. Classic Schmosby. Bonus story, another surgery, docs are cool, they let me be awake so I could watch it for fun. Surgery is happening, I'm watching him on the monitor as he hacks away tissue inside my messed up joint. It's really cool, but hard to follow. Surgeon graciously explains things to me a little as he works. I'm biting my tongue trying not to annoy him by asking too many questions, but of course I'm on drugs. I probably got a little chatty. Last thing I remember is when I say something, he just looks over at the anesthesiologist. Story 3. When I got my wisdom teeth removed, doctor. Alright, so you're feeling that sedative yet? Me. Yeah, a little bit. I bet I can stay awake though. How long can people usually fight it? Doctor. Not long. Good night. Me. Blackout. I remember laughing when I woke up because that was the last thing I remember. I had this exact same conversation. The only difference was I woke up halfway through them talking about my wisdom teeth. My mother could hear me yelling from the waiting room. The doctor was, uh, a little surprised. Would this be a good time to mention I had an upper GI scope last week and woke up during that too? This one was less dramatic. I made eye contact with the doctor and then tried to rip the scope out of my mouth. Then back under I went. Wow, so many who have woken up during procedures. We should band together and do something. Something nefarious. I do not have red hair, nor am I Irish. Today I learned red hair can indicate a resilience to anesthesia. Same here for my wisdom teeth. Woke up, saw blood all over the surgeon's hands, heard a crunch, they had to shatter a tooth, thought to myself, well, frick that, and went right back to sleep. Story 4. I was being wheeled into emergency abdominal surgery once, and my girlfriend was with me. We are rolling down the hall, and they have the mask out to put me under, and I pause and say to her, don't let them touch my dong. The nurse smirked a little, and they put the mask on me. In somewhat of a panicked fashion, I pulled the mask off, stared up at my girlfriend, and with full weight and seriousness, told her, they can look at it, but no touching. I heard the doctor laughing as the gas kicked in. This takes the pie. I've been shown the light of the holy pie. When I came in from anesthesia, the young nurse and my wife had me by the arms and were walking me to our car. Apparently, I said, two chicks at the same time, in the tone of Lawrence from Office Space. It wasn't major abdominal surgery, it was a spinal nerve injection, so just a few hours of being out, and when it was time to go home, I was still high as a kite. 
This is particularly funny because they most certainly did touch your wiener. With long surgeries under general anesthetic, you need a catheter so you don't leak all over the sterile fields. Sorry. Story 5. I will use the top comment in my surgery tomorrow. Please don't say you're allergic to something at the last minute. I know it seems funny, but it could really screw up the surgery schedule, supplies, and the techs and nurses schedule. Also, it could cause them to panic for your safety. I work in surgery sometimes when I operate the C-arm for fluoroscopy, and I can tell you setting up and sticking to schedule is very, very stressful at times. Your surgeon also might fire you as a patient. Sorry, I had to be the one to rain on your parade. I just know that the outcome would not justify the joke in this case. Just wait a few hours. You will have a funnier line to give. No worries, I'll use something where I won't screw the whole thing. Thank you for actually replying to the comments so we can all be reassured that you won't mess up the surgery. I cannot tell you how bad some of the other original posters are with delivering stuff like that. Story 6. I tend to get massive erections while under anesthesia, but it's fine. Just tape it down if it gets in the way. I had surgery in April and my doctor told me that I had an erection. I didn't even care. For anybody that was wondering, I had a cyst removal. How did that conversation go? So doc, how did it all go? Excellent, no problems at all, and you should be good to go tomorrow morning. You had a huge erection. Okay, I don't even care. You didn't care that your doctor thought to point out that you had an erection when he should have been busy doing his job? Unless it was wiener surgery, what the F is he doing even mentioning that? Oh, by the way, your foot twitches when, um, your foot twitches. Story 7. I asked for a tummy tuck while being wheeled in for a bowel resection. I said, while you're cutting it open, just cut some off. Then when I was done with my surgery, but still pretty messed up on drugs, I asked if I was skinny and then cried when my doctor told me he didn't give me a tummy tuck. Same doctor, different procedure, terribly inappropriate joke. Had to have a colonoscopy, so they gave me some medication when I was awake, but like, it was weird. Anyways, I was feeling silly and told him, first time doing anal on camera and I'm not even getting paid. Terribly inappropriate joke. You mean appropriate. I asked for a tummy tuck after both of my C-sections. Doc gave me the same answer each time. I make it work, I don't make it pretty. Story 8. I was being put under for a wisdom tooth extraction a few years back, and it was the first time I've ever had anesthesia. They used an injection method rather than gas, so they told me to watch the fluids going in so I could gauge when I'd feel sleepy. I had this idea that I would say something like, Oh no, Doc, I've lost my eyesight, or something else preposterous. Before I could collect my thoughts, I just immediately blurted, Well, shoot my voice progressively getting lower and passed out. That made me laugh harder than any other comment. Clay Davis? This was basically how I was putting it under. So how long will this surge? <laughs> this is some good. Story 9. I actually did the same thing before both of mine. I managed to get out. I'll see you in the future, doc, or something. Either way, once the drugs kicked in, I didn't care. I actually just remembered I didn't get to say anything the first time, as I was about to lay down on the table, they were stepping my arms down, and I poop you not, the woman says, Okay, put your arms out like a T. Yeah, it's like you're being crucified. I only got out, What? Then I woke up and looked at the first woman. I said, I'm freaking hungry. Oh, shoot, sorry. She laughed and gave me goldfish. That's heavy. Story 10. The last time I tried to say something funny right before surgery, they were about to put me out, and I said, Go easy on me, doc. It's my first time. I gave a little chuckle, and so did the doctor. He then picked up a scalpel and said, Don't worry, it's my first time too. And then I promptly blacked out. I would give the doctor gold for that one. Let the search commence. Um, I'm the doctor. Yeah, sure. Story 11. Here's one that actually happened. My grandmother's sister was getting an epidural done for one of her children. When she came to, everybody involved couldn't stop giggling around her, and she had no idea why until it came out later that while she was doped, she had repeated one of my great-grandfather's favorite problems of logic. If you're shoved up to your neck backwards up a sheep's butt and there's a bear coming to eat you, what do you do? Do you pull your head in or bite the sheep's butt to make it run faster? It's a shame he passed away before I was born, that man. Story 12. I had just woken up after having my shoulder worked on. I was in and out of consciousness for a bit and just generally really whacked out. I guess I shifted in the bed and moved the blankets a bit and exposed myself as the nurse came in. She smiled and moved the blankets back. I apparently told the nurse, 
You saw mine. Do I get to see yours? My wife was in the chair next to the bed. I remember thinking the nurse was smoking hot. I woke up and she told me she was flattered. I have no idea what I said. Story 13. When I had my wisdom teeth removed and was given general anesthetic, I apparently said, if this is what being on drugs is like, sign me up. He went and told on me to my mother. After I came to have my wisdom teeth removed, they helped me stand up. I shook their hands off of me and yelled, I've been drunk before, and proceeded to fall straight onto my face. Apparently my mom heard me and just had the Captain Kirk facepalm going on when I came out. Picard, you swine. It physically hurt me. Story 14. As they were pushing the drugs, they asked me to count backwards from ten. All I could say was no. The room erupted in laughter, and I was out. Freaking make me, Doc. When I was a kid, they told me to count back from ten, so I did. I got all the way to zero, and all the docs were looking at one another, extremely confused. Then, just before they were about to do something, I conked out. When I was a kid, I counted ten, nine, eight, seven, then opened my eyes and said six. The anesthesiologist was unpleasantly surprised. Story 15. Awful lot of white people in here. Me, after being sedated for a colonoscopy. This is even funnier if you're also white. Even funnier if you're the doctor. This reminds me of the last colonoscopy I had. The sedation didn't take and I woke up several times during the procedure yelling in pain and confusion before I conked out for good. When I woke up, the doctor tried to talk to me about how I was feeling, but I was so upset and freaked out I hissed at him, then refused to speak at all. Story 16 Last time I went under, started to feel a sort of paralysis and couldn't move. Me Whoa, did you give me something? Nurse. Yes, relax and don't fight it. Me. Okay, but you should sell this stuff in the gift shop. Everybody laughs. Surgeon. Are you okay? Me. Yeah, but I'm disappointed there's no cake. Surgeon, laughing. On the recovery notes, write, give the patient cake. Next thing I know, I'm waking up in recovery with a slice of chocolate cake on the table next to me. Story 17. Wow, I actually have a relevant story that happened recently. As I was getting ready to go under, they were placing a device in my mouth to keep me from biting down on the scope they were going to use for the endoscopy. Think medical ball gag, but a hard plastic ring instead of a ball. As the gal was placing it in, I asked, Wait, what's the safe word? I heard a good amount of laughing as the world turned to black. Story 18. Waking from anesthesia one time, I heard someone say, His blood pressure is a little high. Then I mumbled, That'd be the anesthetist's assistant's fault. They then kind of startled, asked quickly, why is that? Becoming slightly more coherent, I continued with, she's really hot. They all laughed and said, he'll be fine, and released from theater. How it really sounded. His blood pressure is a little high. What was that? She's really hot. Get this man out of here. Story 19. I want my baby back, baby back, baby back. I want my baby back, baby back, baby back. Then the surgeon will be all ticked off the whole time because you never finished it. As soon as you wake up, try and muster ribs, chilies. Another version, I see you shiver with antissa. And when you wake up, do it calculus style. We should start the surgery with a dramatic wake up, pause. This surgery is going to be legend. Passes out. Wake up, dairy. Story 20. Before going under for wisdom teeth, the doctor said I might feel funny. They pushed the drugs and asked if I felt any different. My butthole, and only my butthole, began to itch like crazy. And it was hot. Not warm. Hot. Like I just ate peppers with my arse. I told them my butthole is itching like crazy. The assistant was really bad at holding back a laugh. The doc resisted mightily, but he too succumbed to my newly discovered butthole emotions. Story 21. You can fondle me while I'm out if you want. They already do that. It's called a catheter, and if they don't do it, you pee yourself during surgery. I would prefer peeing myself over having a tube pushed up my wiener. Would you prefer having a tube pushed up your wiener, or dying of septic shock because you peed into your own surgical wounds? My top comment is now about death by surgical whizzing. Please never change, internet. Story 22. I once had to have my right hand operated on for a serious injury. Dr. Grace, will I be able to play guitar after this? Oh, sure you will. Funny, I never could before. The operating room fell silent. 
I think I've heard the joke as, Doctor, will I be able to play piano after the surgery? Absolutely, it's a very safe procedure. Awesome, I've always wanted to be able to play an instrument. Story 23. Related comment, but doesn't really answer the question. My dad was in the middle of a surgery repairing some pretty nasty damage on his wrist after a skiing accident. He was under heavy anesthesia, but the surgeons were having serious trouble with the screws in his wrist, which apparently jarred him around enough to wake up. He noticed their struggles and managed to say, righty tidy, lefty loosey. Then he passed back out. Story 24. So after my dad had a triple bypass and was just waking up, and they had removed the breathing tube, I was in the room with him. I said something along the lines of, Everything went perfect with your surgery, Dad. No problems. My dad, in his drug haze, said, That is because I am a perfect specimen of a human male, and it couldn't have gone any other way. Nurses were cracking up. Story 25. I had broken my wrist and was being put under to have four pins inserted. They gave me my anesthesia through an IV. I felt coldness spreading up my arm and across my chest. The nurse asked how I was doing, and I said, This must be what dying feels like. I heard her say, Oh my god. Then I was out. So, did you pass away? Yes. My condolences. Story 26. For the record, my wife does not like it in the butt, because I said this before my surgery. My wife is an OR nurse who works at the hospital I was in. I don't remember saying this, but her co-workers remember it. How did that go over later? She took it pretty well. I told her, at least I didn't say you love it in the butt. Story 27. Right before I went under to have surgery on my septum, I was about to start counting backwards before they put the mask on. Does anyone need anything while I'm out? The last thing I remember was an OR room full of people hysterically laughing. I'm going to need to get surgery so I can use this. Story 28. You have to look the surgeon squarely in the eyes and with a straight face whisper, I want you inside me. That's how you wake up with prolapsed anus. Ah, frick, I can't believe you've done this. That's how you woke up with a prolapsed anus. I want your tools inside me. Story 29. My surgeon told me to think of a happy place. Then he asked me where it was. The Simpsons kicked in and I told him it was the happiest place on earth, Tijuana. I didn't stay awake long enough to see if he even got the reference. Tahiti, it's a magical place. Story 30. Here's my impression of my wife in bed. I'd like to dedicate the success of this comment to my wife. May she someday awaken from the coma, and or exist. Doctor, not with me, you son of a witch. This thread has taught me that doctors have sick comebacks. Story 31. This is kind of relevant, but I recently had ankle surgery, and just after waking up, I looked at everyone and said, Already finished? That was quick. And they all looked at me with extremely annoyed looks on their faces, and the surgeon said, That took us four hours. Story 32. I had to get some surgery that involved cutting open my head. Right before they gassed me, I said, I should warn you, there's a spooky skeleton in there. The last thing I remember is his response of, I'll try to look out for that. Story 33. If I don't make it through this, tell my wife I want her to be buried alive with me. If I don't make it through this, tell my wife I said, hello. All I know is my gut says maybe. It's a beige alert. Story 34. My wife went to the dentist last weekend. After several shots of numbing, she sang to him, I can't feel my face when I'm with you. To a dentist's credit, without batting an eyelid, he replied in full voice, Cause I numbed it. Story 35. Patient. Knock, knock. Medical staff. Who's there? Patient. Nobody. Medical staff. Nobody who. Classic exit. That'd be a great time to try the reverse knock, knock. Want to hear a knock, knock joke? Obvs. Okay, you start though. Knock, knock. You. Out cold. Story 36. When I got my wisdom teeth out, the dentist's office was right next to a funeral home. I told the guy that if anything went horribly wrong, they could just take me next door. Mother and doctor were not amused. Story 37. Yo, let me know if you see my phone in there. I'm getting my butthole operated on at the end of the year. Saved. Yo, if you find a pair of plastic horses in there, don't worry. The situation is stable. Story 38. Thanks for doing this. There aren't many surgeons out there who would operate on someone without health insurance. Wakes up in the parking lot wearing a surgery gown. Without a kidney. And a bill for a hospital stay. Story 39. They had a thing checking my heart, and it fell off, and it flatlined. I told them, God dang it, you killed me. Quick, we're losing me. Beep. I can't believe you've done this. Ah, frick. Story 40. 
ba 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 I want to be sedated. Said over and over again as long as possible until you pass out. Story 41. I remember being a celebrity at a hospital after I said, I love my girlfriend because she got big booby loob loobies. When I'd go in, I'd have doctors and nurses teasing me. I was 16 at the time. Story 42. To the surgeon and nurse, I just want you both to know, good luck. We're all counting on you. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious, and don't call me Shirley. That's my line. Story 43. Last time I went under, as I started to fade, I said, you're going to have to drive. I'm messed up. Probably came out, you're going to have a drive. I'm messed up. Method acting, I like it. Story 44. Who's the guy with the scythe standing in the corner? That's the other surgeon. He's sitting in. Don't worry, this will be painless. With this anesthesia, of course. Dr. Re Per, MD. Story 45. If something goes wrong and I go into a coma, don't you dare freaking cut my coma beard. Yes, ma'am. Story 46. My twin owes me big time for this one. Surgeon. Mine too. Anesthesiologist. Mine too. Me too, thanks. Story 47. Just before I blacked out, the anesthetist said to me, this is the stuff that ended Michael Jackson's life. Story 48. While going under, did I ever tell you how I got these scars? Coming to, that's how. Story 49. Oh God, I feel like I'm going to have diarrhea. Get me to a toil. Story 50. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Greg's come to talk with Greg again. Story 51. Just a forewarning, but I am plagued by wet dreams. Story 52. I swear to God, if I wake up as RoboCop. Story 53. And with this, the blood pact is complete. Story 54. There is another Skywalker. Story 55. Pre-op, Marco. Post-op, Polo. Story 56. Your wife has a great butt. Story 57. Don't do any butt stuff. Story 58. Here's to relapsing. Story 59. Heil Hydra. Please leave your stories in the comments. I'd love to make a video of them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.